and welcome back to part two of changing your rear discs and pads, painting your caliper and some general arch maintenance. So in this video we're actually going to get round to taking the caliper off. So it's a 13 and a 15 mil spanner to undo the caliper. So we're going to undo the top bolt first and then the lower bolt. As we go through this video I'm going to go through some stuff I found and the reason that I've had to do a future video after this as well. So this was done in the summer of last year, in 2014, and this year I've had to take some sort of extra action off as a result of it. But undo the caliper bolts first, and then you've got sort of the caliper uh, sort of spring bolts, piston things, I can't remember what they're called. But once that's undone, we're gonna take off this holding clip for the handbrake cable. We're gonna clamp the brake line, because we're gonna be taking the caliper completely off the car. Now, the best way to do this, which maybe isn't shown, is to lever um, the handbrake down. So you, you lever it back. So the best way to do that is before I'm doing everything, is just to lever it back and you can pull that through. Now, this little sort of sleeve is on either side, so you just want to pop that off there. And then you can pop it all the way over and you can pull the um, you can pull the handbrake through. So that's now out of the way. Now the next thing we want to undo, I think that might be a 13 mil. Um, we're gonna undo the brake line itself, so that's why we've clamped it. And we just want to get that out of the way. Now you might have some special brake clamps or anything like that. Don't do it with hard clamps. Um, you may wreck your lines which is you're going to get things leaking or you're just going to break them and they're not going to work as effectively. So I know I'm going to lose some fluid as I do this and it gets bled later. That's not part of the video. Um, bleeding is something I'm working on getting better at. So I'm just using a finger of a glove or rather my friend is, I'm using a finger of a glove just to cover the brake line up and we're going to zip tie it off and that's just going to stop too much fluid coming out. So it will fill with fluid but you should just stop it from constantly flowing out and drying the entire system out. So once we've done that, we can tuck that one out of the way as well. And we can sort of come back to getting the, uh, the caliper off. So I'm just going to hit it with a sort of rubber mallet that's filled with sand. And that does a nice job at loosening it up. Um, to be fair, I should probably just give it a good solid few hits the first time. Uh, it's kind of difficult with the camera there because you can't sort of swing all the way in, but it will, there you go, just lift off. So taking the old pads off. Now the reason it was rattling is you can see that it was completely down to the metal. Now, wasn't really sure what the reason for this was. Um, it, again, I said it becomes clear in another video, but the piston was sticking. Uh, but I thought that this was just that the pads had been changed by the previous owner out of sync and that one had worn through quicker. So you've got the holding screw on your disc, you undo the two of those and it will just lift out. So if you were just going to change your discs, all you would need to do, you wouldn't have to take the entire caliper off like we have done, you just need to lift it back and you can put your, old, your new disc back on. Using a wind back tool there, we're winding back the piston on the caliper. Now it can be easier when it is on the car, uh, but we're just doing this because of, remember I mentioned that we're going to be painting it. It was really stiff, and again, this maybe should have been one of the sort of warning signs of the pistons probably had better days and it could, um, it could use a rebuild. Again, I'm going to pop the link to the rebuild video in the end of this video because that has massively solved all the issues. However, more for the purpose of this video, it was to show how to change it. So you can get uh, brake piston wind back tools from the internet. You can get them from sort of most car places. They aren't too expensive. And you just see us breaking for lunch there. But what we're doing here is we're just building the caliper up for painting. So just using a bit of hose and some washers, we're sealing off some of the bolts there. And just waiting for the food to be ready, because when you do something like this, it does take sort of a fair amount of time. But once you've cleaned everything back, you can see how the carriers, the calipers look. And if you compare that to how it looked at the very beginning of the first video, it's quite a bit of a difference. 
Now this is after painting them with some high temperature paint. So after covering them all over with a few layers, they end up going into the oven and that's to bake the paint on. So I'm going to give everything else a bit of a clean up because I'm going to paint where the I'm going to paint the carries where the caliper bolts onto. So again, I'm just using the sandblasting tool and I've taped off anything important. And you can just see with that sandblast, it really, really does just pull everything right back. So I'm not too fussed about it hitting anything under the arch, um, but it really, really does do a fantastic job of sort of just cleaning any corrosion off and getting things back to bare metal. It's probably something if you could take everything off and clean it up, if it's worth doing. So all I've done now, I've um, used the same bacon paint, uh, which is just gonna have to have time to dry. Um, and put it onto the carriers and we've masked off anything where paint may drip onto. Now just put a bit of copper grease onto the hub because of the disc is going to go back on in a second. So you just want to go all the way around and sort of make sure it's sort of on there quite nicely and then we're going to pop the disc on. Now I covered the disc with some masking tape as well because the paint wasn't quite dry on the carrier this was more of a time thing, um, I, because I used the car on a daily basis, this was being worked on over the weekend. This being the Sunday, didn't really have much more time to do anything else. So I've got a nice, clean, shiny new disc there. I'm just gonna pop it on. I'm still being careful not to try and get paint on there anyway, because of this, it's gonna be messy when you take off the tape. But you wanna get the holding screws into place, and then you've got your disc sorted. You can maybe see a bit of paint sort of hanging down. Uh, one of the things that I did find, I've got some sort of weird, I don't know, inch long bits of paint that are hanging down and a couple of weeks later when I came back to it, they just got snipped off. So it really didn't matter. Okay, so you pop the top one in and then like I said, we're just gonna rotate that round slowly and we can pull that tape off and you've got that nice clean disc. So I know I'm reiterating this part here, but you don't want to get paint onto the disc if you are doing this kind of thing. If you've gone a different way and you spray with, um, you're spraying it with cans or sort of an air, air spray or something like that. Again, just cover up anything that you don't want to get paint onto. You don't want to wreck your braking system with paint. Okay, so we've got that sort of nice and flowing. We've taken the paint off of everything that it doesn't need to be onto, and we're going to get ready to stick the pads back on. You can pop on like these anti little rattle pads back onto the carriers. Again, when you are taking everything apart, if you do do stuff like that, don't misplace them, put them in somewhere. And a bit of anti seize on the back of the pad. And you pop one on, and we're gonna stick the other one on the other side. So when you're winding your, um, your, your piston back on your caliper as well, is just to know, wind it back as far as you can and measure the distance so it does fit over the two pads because of this piston had run out so far, it was a right pain to do. Normally you wouldn't get that far when you're changing your pads, but it's one of the issues that we found. Okay, so you're gonna line up your piston, uh, you're gonna line up your caliper and you're gonna screw it back into place. So we do this first because it makes the handbrake lever a lot easier to put on. Also the same for putting the brake line back on. Now you've got the, um, I was calling them pistons earlier, but you've got slide pins that move around and it doesn't look too bad there, um, but the slide pin underneath I think is what led to the piston sticking. Uh, it gets quite corroded, which probably didn't do everything favors in the end. Now we're taking off the covers we've had there, and we're gonna put the brake line back on. So that's just gonna get done up. There will be air in the system. It does need bleeding out. But that again, it's covered in other people's videos and hopefully I'll get to do a reasonable one in the future. And for the handbrake cable, you're gonna push back the lever and you're gonna pull it through and then you're gonna reattach the, uh, the covers that go onto the different parts of the handbrake lever there. And then of course, 
last but not least on that, you want to put a spring clip back in place. So as I mentioned, you just have the little bit of manoeuvring that you need to do in order to get that handbrake back in place. And you can do it with a screwdriver or some kind of lever, but it just lets you get it all in place nicely. And that's it really. Um, it's not the most difficult job in the world changing brakes, but just took those extra few stages on this to clean out the rear arches. I uh, didn't cover putting them back in, but you can see once it's done that the wheel does look a lot bit better because of A, I've painted the wheel, but B, you can see the red brake behind there. Um, I've protected the rear arch, I've sorted that spring out, and there you go. So thank you very much for watching this. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and please hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more videos. Uh, of course, I did mention that I would be following up with another video from this that I've done recently, and that is of rebuilding a rear caliper. So one of the problems that made this whole video have to happen was that the brake wore out, the pad had wore down some metal, and that was because the piston was sticking. I'm going to leave that there for this video, and join me for the next one. Thank you.